Hi, I'm going to demonstrate the compass features of the Shearwater Petrol 2 dive computer. The compass is accessed by pressing the right button once. Uh, it's available in any mode and it appears as this first information screen on the right button. You can then continue on to the other information screens uh, until you get back to the main screen. Uh, unlike the other information screens, the compass isn't going to time out after 10 seconds. It's going to stay there so you're, you can navigate. Uh, to quickly get off the compass, just press the left button and you'll be back at the main screen. The compass shows the cardinal directions at 90 degrees, uh, also directions at 45 degrees and tick marks at 22 and a half degrees. So of course we've got west at 270 degrees, south at 180 degrees, east at 90 degrees, and then back to north at 0 or 360 degrees. The compass moves uh, quickly and fluidly, and one other feature of it is that it is tilt compensated. So if the compass is tilted, it will still uh, behave normally. You can see you can tilt it on either axis here. Okay. Now that's, that's opposed to some analog compasses which uh, when they're tilted, the needle will bind up and it's not until they're laid flat that the, it actually behaves properly. In order to uh, aid navigation, you can mark a heading. So if I go to the mark compass uh, option here and press select, uh, you can see that the direction I was heading is marked and that allows me to stay on course. If I get off course too much, uh, an arrow will point back to my heading. Or if I go uh, 180 degrees from my marked heading, you'll see the reciprocal heading is shown in red to allow me to navigate back the way I came. I can mark a new heading, but you can only have one heading marked at a time. It's meant to be a simple, easy to use function without a lot of extra complexity. So if I go into the system setup menu, there is a compass setup page and here I can turn the compass right off. So I will do that and now if we go back to the main screen, uh, it's not there. And you're also not going to get that mark heading uh, menu option. You can do that if you don't like the compass. Um, in terms of battery life, the compass itself is very low power. You're not going to notice uh, better battery life with the compass off, but you can turn it off if you don't like it. Uh, this compass view, this changes how much of the arc you can see on the main screen. So I had it on 120 degrees. I'll show you what's different now. If we go back here, uh, you can see there's not as many um, tick marks shown on the screen now. Um, this is actually 60, I, I don't like it. I don't find that there's enough um, that you can see. That's actually the true amount of kind of the, the arc that's... Um, that, that's covered by the angle is 60 degrees. So that 60 degree setting is the most accurate, but I like seeing 120 degrees in that you can, you can see more of the compass dial. Um, the calibration, uh, I've shown that in another video, so I'm not going to cover that here, uh, but that's to compensate for mostly for changing the battery or to compensate for uh, drift due to aging. Uh, the true north compensation is something a little bit different. Uh, this is called declination or magnetic variation or true north, I called it for simplicity. Uh, and you'll look this up on a map and the magnetic declination uh, in Vancouver, BC, where we are, is plus 16 degrees. You can set this from um, plus, uh, minus 99 degrees to plus 99 degrees and you'll look that up on a map. And now it will, the direction that the compass points will will actually be to true north uh, as opposed to magnetic north which varies around the world. Now if you're just trying to match an analog compass that's uncompensated or your navigation is just relative, you can leave that that setting at, at zero. Uh, you don't have to use it. So that's a, a quick rundown of the features of the compass. Uh, we hope you'll find it's, it's a useful tool. In order to get the best use out of it, you're going to want to make sure you calibrate it properly. Um, so that's typically when you change batteries. Uh, watch this. Uh, you can see you can see how the, the reading was swaying around there. Uh, the, these batteries, they have a steel housing. So they're going to affect the, the uh, magnetometer readings. 
Uh, and that's not really a limitation of the digital compass so much. You'll see the analog compass is, is affected just the same. Uh, but the digital compass, it's a problem until you calibrate it. And once you calibrate it, that effect will be calibrated right out and the digital compass will behave normally. So make sure you calibrate. Make sure you stay away from large uh, ferromagnetic objects or permanent magnets. Those will affect any compass and you have to be aware of those limitations when using a compass. Otherwise, uh, we hope it helps with your diving and that you find it a useful feature. Thank you.